To me, Morrowind represents this unparalleled sense of wonder, discovery, and pure adventure. It's the ability to write your own destiny, carving an epic tale from lowly outlander to a godlike entity as you wander through this mysterious land. An island filled to the brim with fascinating culture, internal conflict, stunning locations, and bizarre wildlife. Almost two decades after release, it still, for my money, provides one of the most unique settings in gaming. The Dark Elf, or Dunma, island of Vardenfell feels so alien and hostile compared to so many other fantasy RPG settings, and yet it's simultaneously welcoming, inviting you to explore every inch of this mesmerising landscape. Such a distinct world provides the perfect playground for almost any kind of character you can imagine setting out on whatever quest you deem worthy. Cure the island of a deadly blight, discover the secrets of the enigmatic tribunal, settle some old scores between ancient houses, get attacked by furious militant ordinators simply for wearing their sacred armour without permission, or just rob everyone in town and sell your stolen wares to a talking mud crab. There's just so much out there to discover, and everything you find feels so uniquely tailored to both you and your character's story. Hi there, I'm James, Senior Editor at Triple Jump, and this is what The Elder Scrolls Free Morrowind means to me. Stand up. There you go. You were dreaming. What's your name? So I think it was 2003 when I first experienced Morrowind, and started down this long path of becoming a shameless Elder Scrolls apologist. I was 13 at the time, and I'd recently been lucky enough to have been bought my first PC. Nothing that high spec, but still it must have cost my poor parents a, a fair wedge. Instead of using it for productive things like pff, homework, I took the opportunity to branch out into PC games I'd not experienced before. Games like Warcraft 3, Civilization 3, or this niche little ancient Greek city builder called Zeus, Master of Olympus. They were all worlds apart from the Nintendo 64 and GameCube that I was used to, but it was Morrowind that truly opened my eyes to what video games could be. A huge open world full of strange ruins, giant mushrooms and floating jellyfish that lets you be and do whatever you want. Oh, it, it blew my tiny adolescent mind. The starting town of Sedanine and the infamous prison boat intro is so iconic in my head, but I remember being more confused and intrigued than necessarily enamoured right away. It was both exciting and bewildering, setting up my character in the thankfully short intro sequence because I'd never played an RPG with this much depth before. I stumbled my way through that brilliant introductory questionnaire not even knowing what a sweet roll was. Although, you'd better believe I picked the option to throw that tasty treat up in the air. Oh yeah, perfect distraction. It was a relatively slow burn to begin with, much like the game's pacing as a whole, I suppose. And nowhere is that more evident than one of my very first thoughts, which was, why do I move so slow? It was certainly a learning curve, getting used to the systems that felt weird even back then like the dialogue being a, a wall of text filled with wiki-style links, or not being able to hit a damn thing in combat. And yet, it still managed to evoke excitement, danger, and limitless possibility round every single corner. And as soon as I stepped out into Sedanine properly, that's when the sense of wonder really started to take root. You could go literally anywhere. And that's exactly what I did. I marvelled at this towering silt strider, which is basically a bug bus for the native Dunma. I wandered into the swamp, and swiftly ran back in fear of the local wildlife. I stole the money from Fargoth's stash, as is tradition. Then I set off to find Balmora, with directions I barely comprehended and probably with no idea how to even equip a weapon. At this point, I was already sold on the world. 
And then came the moment that everyone who's ever played this game will surely remember. I hear a scream and see a wizard fall out of the sky onto the road in front of me. On his body were three powerful scrolls of Ikarian flight. Obviously, one look at their power and you have to try it out. So the next thing I know, I jump and I'm soaring through the sky, taking in this bizarre landscape zipping by below me in just complete awe. And then I landed with a thump and died. Because of course that would happen. You're not going to survive that fall. You literally just saw what happened to the last guy. I don't think I was even annoyed. I was just amazed because this, this moment perfectly sums up the brilliant madness of Morrowind. Not only is the game so comfortable with its complex web of systems that it will happily let you borderline break it, but the fact that a level one nobody can, within half an hour, find this extremely rare scroll and get a taste for high level power before literally crashing back down to earth, oh it's, it's just fantastic. The flying wizard incident was just the beginning. The rush of joy from finding Balmora after a long and dangerous trek was incredible, and then meeting the inexplicably topless Caius Casades, learning about the local Neravarine legend, I'm sure that'll never come up again, and being directed to the local guilds, I mean the adventure just took off from there. We're watching Scum. Yeah, it's safe to say that Morrowind came at a pretty important point in my life, and like many of the games discussed here, the nature of how it shaped my tastes and attitudes towards gaming made it really significant in itself. It's the reason why I love the Elder Scrolls series. My hype for Oblivion was the sole reason why I bought an Xbox 360, and I still unironically love Skyrim even if it has become basically a meme these days. And Morrowind is how I properly fell into PC gaming, and why I still gravitate more towards PC games today if given the option. As for its more immediate impact on 13 year old me, well, obviously early years at secondary school could be tough for a lot of people. And at that age, I'd made a few friends, but still wasn't exactly what you call sociable. So naturally, this detailed fantasy world where you can escape into a completely different life, well, it had plenty of appeal. You might think that this sort of game probably did no favours for my social life at the time, and you'd be mostly right. But it did help me build up more of a friendship with someone who I still count as one of my best mates today. So I was at school excitedly talking through all of these weird adventures I'd had in Morrowind to my mate Bob. It sounds like a fake name, but he is real, honest. And Christ, I must have sounded like just the coolest kid around, spouting off nonsense about Daedric artifacts and the Tribunal of Living Gods, or items like the Brutes of Blinding Speed. Well, somehow, something must have caught his interest because not long afterwards, he had got the game too. So then we'd be swapping stories about all of the crazy things we'd found, like the talking scamp merchant or the overpowered chameleon amulet, or figuring out just how you could actually kill the living god Vivek. It was great, it was kind of like those early years before internet guides were so widespread when a game's secrets were whispered around school playgrounds like ancient folklore. You know, like the Mew that's definitely hidden under that truck near the SSM. My favourite story that Bob had told me was the time that he tried out the Creation Kit, a modding toolset bundled with the game, and how he made an enchanted book, titled Rob is Cool, naturally, which I think increased his attributes by 10,000 or something ridiculous like that. And if the fact that you can make an item that can help you punch a god clean into oblivion doesn't just sum up the brilliance of Morrowind, then at the very least, it's a game that helped me make a friend for life. Which is, you know, still pretty cool, I guess. Hey. 
A lot of Morrowind's appeal grew on me over time, but there are definitely some distinct moments that I can pinpoint where things just clicked. Apart from the infamous flying wizard incident, there was a moment I remember that was a little further into my first playthrough, where I was heading around the northwest area of the map. I was walking past a, a fairly innocuous pool of water, where a lady nearby asks you to find a ring that she's dropped in the pond. But what seems like just a standard side quest quickly turns into an ambush when you go to retrieve it as you're attacked by both the lady and her invisible partner hiding nearby. After swiftly putting them in their place and looting everything they had, it's an item that her invisible friend had that became really significant. This Amulet of Shadows gave you an 80% chameleon spell, which is basically a more effective and flexible type of invisibility. What this meant was essentially god mode for any kind of thievery you could imagine, and it made stealing things an absolute breeze. From this point, I took every valuable that wasn't nailed down, which helped smooth the early game difficulty significantly, but it also helped me realise just how powerful some of these enchanted artefacts could be and I started to better understand the deeper magical systems at play, which really opened up new possibilities that I hadn't even considered. The second major point where things clicked was later on in the same playthrough. At a certain point in the main quest, you might get attacked by some random NPCs, and after I fought off one such attacker, who also happened to live in the town of Balmora, it dawned on me. I could claim his house for myself! So that's what I did. I moved my stash of various shiny treasures out of Caius Cosardus's glorified skooma den, it was probably a relief for him as it meant more space for drug paraphernalia, and I started hoarding everything away in my very own property. Oh sure, it wasn't legally mine by the game's definition, but the fact that you could do this, and that most random NPCs had their own property or personal space was truly a revelation. I even spent far too long arranging all of my weapons and trinkets on the shelves and tables proudly on display. Yes, I was that sad. Plenty more moments stand out, but the beautiful thing about Morrowind is ask anybody else for a standout moment and you'll probably get a completely different answer, such as the diverse and varied nature of this wonderful game. Yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. So, I'm probably going to end up describing most of the game as being my favourite part, but I'll try and narrow it down. The biggest aspect by far is that overall sense of setting out on your own personalised adventure. With a vast choice of skills that are available to you, it means that you can run with all sorts of different characters, almost anything you can think of. Sure, not all skills are created equal. Sneak, for example, isn't particularly well implemented. And making a custom Khajiit circus performer class that specialises in acrobatics, athletics and illusion, well, that's probably going to make any attempt at combat an exercise of frustration. But there is nothing stopping you from just doing this anyway, because of the classic Elder Scrolls way that all skills level as you use them, so it only really affects how tricky a start you have. Complex background calculations based on your stats affect most of your actions, giving it a bit of an old school RPG feel, but it doesn't punish you completely for poor starting builds, and in fact, it rewards anyone willing to understand and experiment with these systems. Morrowind doesn't even try to keep things balanced, and that's completely fine, because if you've thought of a genius solution to a tricky problem, why shouldn't you have your fun? This is why they axed levitation in the later games by the way, because they were afraid of its sheer power. Surprisingly, for an Elder Scrolls game, quite a few faction quests have multiple solutions too. They're not the most complex branch in quest lines, and they tend to arise more from your actions themselves than necessarily being blatantly signposted choices, but it does reward anyone who pays attention, and helps give that feeling of player control. This feeling of player choice is reflected in the sheer number of guilds that you can join as well. 
There are 10 major factions, not counting the minor groups, and most of their quest lines intersect with the other guilds in different and interesting ways. The three great houses are just fantastic. It's Hlalu, Redoran, and Telvani, and they each loosely mirror the more typical thieves, fighters, and mages guilds, respectively. You can only join one house per playthrough, but it is so worth trying them all, if only for the excellent insight into the weird and wonderful culture of Morrowind. And then there's the Imperial Legion, the Imperial Cult and Tribunal Temple for that lovely dose of made-up fantasy religion, the Morag Tong Assassins, ah, they're all just so amazing. This exclusivity between the guilds, not to mention the skill requirements for joining many of them, means that you'll never experience everything with just one character. And personally, I think that's fantastic. It encourages unique playthroughs every single time, rather than each character becoming an identical copy of themselves, all ending up as the same generic stealth archer who becomes leader of every single guild every single time I'm looking at you, Skyrim. The factions lead into the second thing that I absolutely love about Morrowind, and that is Morrowind itself. The weird Dunma culture presented in Morrowind is the most intriguing backdrop we've ever seen in the Elder Scrolls series. I mean, they ride around in giant bugs. Their local delicacy is Kwama eggs, which is a whole kettle of fish that we're not going to go into right now. Their entire wildlife ecosystem is entirely its own, and they worship a trio of living gods. Yet it all makes sense and somehow feels believable. Then you've got the unusual landscape itself. The giant hollowed out crab shell in Alderun, the imposing Telvani mushroom towers, the ghost gate that cordons off the blight coming from Red Mountain. You're never that far away from seeing something amazing. I could go on, but I'd absolutely kick myself if I didn't also mention the sublime soundtrack to the game composed by Jeremy Soule. The host of beautifully atmospheric exploration tracks really help amplify that feeling of wonder and mystery when exploring this strange land. And hearing those iconic drum beats and the familiar series motif in the opening theme, ugh, every time it, it gives me goosebumps, it might be the best title theme in any game. Ah, <laughs> well, I have no idea how many times for sure, but I dread to think the hours that I've put into this game. It's hard to gauge it in the traditional sense of completing a game, because you don't really ever complete an Elder Scrolls game. I'm not sure how many characters I've made over the years either, but it's got to be well into double digits. In terms of chunks of time playing it, I've probably had five or six sessions over the years where I would play it religiously for weeks on end, and there's been plenty more brief moments where I'd revisit Vardenfell just for a quick whistle-stop tour. My first time, I probably played it consistently for several months, trying out different builds and playstyles. Over the years, I'd dip back in pretty consistently and eventually try out mods. You know, once we'd graduated from dial-up and I could actually download files from the internet. But the last time I played it had to have been around five years ago now, which is a criminal amount of time to leave it. In fact, doing this video is making me think I just have to dive back into Morrowind again soon and make my PC cry from all the stupid unnecessary mods I end up adding. Make it quick, Speak Outlander. Speak quickly, Outlander, or go away. My time is precious, so make it quick. Where's that slave? Morrowind is undoubtedly one of those games that has only grown in popularity and reputation as the years go by. So many people, admittedly myself included, place it on such a high pedestal that I almost feel like 
I have to undersell it at this point. And I'll readily admit, like any title that's almost two decades old, this game definitely shows its age, and not just in the visual department. The walk speed is slow at first, and you'll end up sprinting everywhere to compensate, which isn't great for combat, because then your low stamina will mean that you just keep swinging and missing. And the dialogue system, while perfect for conveying lots of detail, will at times feel like you're reading a story presented through several Wikipedia pages. Oh, and there's no traditional fast travel or quest markers, so you better hope you're good with directions. But having said all that, all of these systems are so, so worth persevering with. There are relatively simple ways around most of these hurdles, and the flaws are so minor when compared with what the game can offer you. A chance at setting out on your own epic journey in a mysterious land so unlike anything else. A world that draws you in and makes you care about its people and their plights. A ridiculously in-depth RPG character system that allows for clever creative solutions around most problems, be it through magic, brute force, or simply talking to the right people. Anyone who enjoys the nitty gritty of min-maxing builds will be more than happy here, but the same goes for those more interested in a rich world with fascinating stories to get lost in. And a ridiculous amount of content means that there's always something new around every corner. Morrowind asks a lot from anybody wanting to play this game in 2021, but despite a few clunky nuances, there's a good reason why so many people still hold it in the highest regard beyond just simple nostalgia. It offers a true role-playing experience, in a world full of character, and quite simply, it's the purest sense of adventure I've ever felt in a modern RPG. And that is what the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind means to me.